Okay, ready, set, go. Oh wow, that was a big, uh, a big flood came in right when I hit the button. That's pretty uh, timely. Good to see you there, Jason Coates, uh, Matt D. All right, wow, that, you guys like just dumped in right at the same time. Good to see you, Matt. Daniel, always uh, fun. Ben, Jason Coates, do I know you? That's funny. Mahir, good to see you. Ah, there's Mr. Hawaii. Wow, Andrew, Scottish look. It's Tasty Tuesday. Wow, you guys are just uh, gone crazy. I appreciate y'all stopping by uh, right away on Tasty Tuesday. And uh, Malt and I are going to have a lot of fun with Sherry tonight. Let me go ahead and get his invite sent so I've got that working while we chat. Uh, hopefully you guys knew I do send out like a Twitter and an Instagram usually uh, one or the other this time was just a, a Twitter because I wasn't taking a picture of a, a particular bottle and um, so with that said um, I still wanted to get the word out so I'll post on uh, Twitter you know what's usually coming up and hopefully you guys brought a little bit of sherry with you tonight that's what the uh, focus is going to be so keep that in mind not that we can't talk about x bourbon and other things too but that's going to be the primary focus because we really have a couple special bottles well a few special bottles and maybe even more depending how you look at it uh, i'm not sure what malt's going to bring he kind of gave me an idea of what he might bring to the table tonight i got a little surprise for you guys too kind of a sneak preview of a uh, upcoming um review what we'll do in this puppy here we'll get more detail in a second what what did you guys bring for sherry tonight i'm just curious what is what is the uh yeah the, i didn't really have much of an intro basically i was just, just saying that uh tonight we're going to do the sherry uh drams uh specifically the allardyce uh, there's a if some of you might be familiar with glendronic and some of the older allardyce releases since the the place with mothballed closed down for a while. Um, there was a period of time, and we'll get into more detail here when uh, Malt comes. I think he's got the spreadsheet. I used to have one. I don't even know if I still have it anymore. Probably I could dig it up. But some of this stuff is like 22 to 24 years old now, and that's what we're going to be sipping on tonight. We've got a 22-year-old Allardyce and a 24-year-old Allardyce because uh, even though it's marked 18, the juice that they used for this was at that actual age and uh so you get kind of like a really good uh think of it as like a discount when you buy bottles if you could find the really old ones that have the older juice in it doing pretty good man don't have any electronic but i've got some time to do 15 ready that is a great i think a great dram and something you know comparable uh it's sherry night and uh here is mr sherry himself <laughs> hey, hey, hey what's up how's it going buddy Happy Pretty good, Tuesday. man. What's up, everyone? Good to That's see a, everybody. Yeah, yeah I was definitely. Been dealing, with, with, been dealing with some skin issues, but I'm uh, doing better now. Uh, nothing, not a few dreams can't, call, you know, fix. Oh, yeah, you know, wash away. <laughs> you can wash that away right quick, man. That's what I'm talking about, especially when you've got really <laughs> old juice to use. <laughs> we do have some old juice that we're going to get into tonight. That is for sure. Should be a lot of fun, man. Oh, wow. Drilling rig with uh, Trooper Henry on the Aaron Emirate. Oh, good Ooh. choice. Did have the trooper? Yeah, Trooper stopped in the happy hour, too. It's great to see you, buddy. And we've got a we've got a surprise coming to you guys. I'm not sure if we're I think I think we've got two bottles coming, possibly. Well, at least I mean, we'll have like at least we'll have one bottle. We've we I was lucky enough locally to find a really good Aaron um, Atama. Is that what that's called? No. What is that? What was that called that we found that was special? You said with the Amrut? We found that. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Oh, I didn't know Aaron had one called an Amaret before. Is that? I was oh, thinking of the Amaret. Is that oh, a new no, one? Yeah, we were talking about. Uh, we're talking about the Aaron. What was the name of that? I'll look it up right quick. Um, it is the Aaron. Um, Aaron Atma. Which, if Maher is in here, might know a thing or two about is. Oh, it's the AATMA one. Yeah, it's a cast strength um, seven year old, which is like 20 some year old in Indian whiskey terms. Uh, cast strength, I think, Sherry Amrut or Port Cask Amrut. 
Ah. So that should the be one, a lot of fun. Yeah, the one we found was called the uh, – Was it, it was the Atma heated port cask. That's yeah. the one yeah. that we found that was specialized. There's only 200 – no, 145 bottles of this worldwide, and we were lucky to find two bottles of this somehow. I don't know how, but we got lucky with that. So that will be a fun one to uh, take a look at down the road at some point. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And we got some fun ones for tonight, if I'm not mistaken. So it's uh, it's Sherry Fest, Sherry Fest 2021 of sorts. Um, yeah, uh, you know, we were talking and we thought we were originally going to do the Allardyce in two hour segments, but then we were thinking, you know what? Like, let's just do them head to head. Plus, they're blind for him. So uh, <laughs> if he's not looking at the chat, maybe I'll 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 let you guys know which ones are which. And uh, yeah, let me let, notice. Yeah, let me hide it real fast. I'll click it on private chat, and that way I don't see any of the uh, oh, yeah, we comments. Can do it. Well, we'll do it in the second hour, so it'll be fine. Oh, okay. But uh, in the meantime, you know, uh, Telex and I were thinking about just some, like, good shard whiskeys that we would recommend to folks um, in, that, uh, you know, are in a relatively decent price range and relatively well available uh, for the most part. Maybe some of them might not be as easy to get, but, uh, you know, we're both big sherry fans, and so... Uh, I'm actually preparing to do a little eight bottle sherry shootout. I got some uh, super cool uh, solid black Glen Karen glasses, which I'm going to do a couple videos with and uh, do a bunch of blind tasting. So I'm going to start to be doing some blinds on my channel, which would be a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to do, I'm going to do basically eight, eight different, uh, you know, heavily sherry or fully sherry, nothing, you know, full sherry maturation, uh, single malts. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, That'd but, be cool. I'm going to try to pick up the same kind of set at some point where we yeah. both uh, Eric and I can do some blind stuff back and forth just to surprise each other and, and see if, you know, it's, a, it's there's nothing better than giving someone what you think is a quality whiskey, but then asking them, what what is it about this that you really like? Because you know that you're not being persuaded or influenced by anything outside of what your experience is right there in the glass. So Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm going to pour my first sherry whiskey. And uh, I don't know, I could, hey, what's up, Mike? Nice to see you. Uh, maybe I can start with this one and then you can talk about your first pour or something like that. Sure. Uh, I went ahead and poured out um, the uh, number 19, we'll call it, and the number 20 because I just wanted to have it air out a little bit before we got to it. Nice. I want to, just for a comparison, not that I'm thinking that this is going to be as good or better or anything. I still had some of that McKellen 18 left. So I thought, you know what? If this Eller Dice is uh, 22 and 24, that type of age, maybe it beats the snot off something like this. We'll have to take a look. And then I had yeah. a new bottle that I haven't opened it. It'll also be an uncorking. Look at that darkness. Oh. That. Oh. That's the Edger yeah. Dower 21 Oloroso. It's a natural cast strength, natural color, 56.2% ABV. Oh, man. Uh, That's I think I might have to. Just to do, I'm gonna open it now. So this is, uh, I haven't. I wanted to do like an official uncorking, so I didn't like, you know, if I opened it earlier, you guys would have probably thought, well, I already, you know, tasted it and all that. But this, yeah, is yeah. Really you know, I wonder, should I join you and uncork something too for the second bottle? Maybe that'd be fun. What do you think? Sure. I mean, if especially if it's sherry that you haven't, uh, you know, haven't it messed is. with before. This so, is a brand uh, new one. Pointing this out. So yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to uncork this. This is a Glen Allicky single oh. uh, cast 2006. It's part of this thing called the Trilogy Series. It was an exclusive release in the UK. It's 14 years old. It is 61% ABV. So oh, this perfect. will be a bomb just like that. And look at how dark that is. <laughs> Did you hear him? He said 61%. This is a that hazmat is bottle. And like it, this is probably the darkest whiskey i've ever seen although those allardice put up money so yeah you know what we're gonna i'll check this one out no time like the present right you know what's funny also and i forgot to, to say anything about it oh i love the 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 top of this cork this is scotland's little gym on the top of the edge of our cork <laughs> that's perfect man that's awesome man 
I, I started out my journey in Isla with Pete, and that's what really got me into Scotch. The funny thing was, I didn't have sherry in 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 Scotch or whiskey or whatever till much later. So that was actually for me. I didn't have to learn how to love Pete. I had to learn how to love sherry because of all the little nuances you get with sulfuric properties and tannins, and you know, there's all all that's like, Pete and sherry are their own separate worlds. And sometimes the great thing about it is if you bring them both together. It could really bring out a magical whiskey with both Pete and Sherry if you're lucky. If you yeah, like both, that is uh, I I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I uh, yeah, that's my I my first Sherry whiskey was again I bought it just out of nowhere. It was like the third single malt bottle I ever bought. You want to guess what it was? Third single malt bottle you had, and it was, it was Sherry, first, you said? The first was Open 14, the second was Lafroy Quarter Cast, but the third was a was a, was a a Sherry whiskey. Ooh, I'm going to think the Glendronic 12. No, it wasn't that, but it, it is 12 years old. <laughs> it was Sherry and 12, uh, McAllen 12. Nope. Not it's, McAllen it's, 12. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's from a brand that I probably would never buy anything from again. Oh, Okay. Oh, okay, if it's not Jura or Akintoshin, no. it's got to be who? Will, oh, Dalmore! <laughs> Dalmore, you know it. I saw that bottle sitting on the shelf, looking cool, and I was like, "Look at the color of that, man! I gotta get this." And then I was look, like, "Look at the stag, man!" Yeah, man, this looks <laughs> bad. I was like, "Wow, I'm gonna check this out." I didn't know nothing. I just bought it. It was like sixty five dollars or something, and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Forty percent, and then yeah, then I had like I think I after that I had a, uh, I mean I even had like I don't remember what it was. I had a couple other like sherry whiskeys, and I was like, oh my god, that, I'm not going to buy the Dolmore again. <laughs> the, the really sad, um, the funny, the funny thing about it is the very very sad thing to me about it is that the Dolmore 18 was one of the very uh, first sherry ones that I did have, and I did actually like a lot, but. When I first tried it, it was going for about 160, and for a, mm -hmm. you know the Dalmore 18 for 160, I thought it was actually a pretty good price. I thought it was you know, it, yeah. it's got it's got issues with the craft, but it was a good tasting whiskey. And then you know I went back thinking, okay, I, I saved up enough money to go get it. I, I even went to my favorite local place, and and everywhere I looked, they jacked the price up to 212. I'm like, what the hell happened there? <laughs> my God. Yeah, I mean that's. Thank it's God we know better now. I'll pass. <laughs> uh, yes, and 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 that's the only reason why I don't have a bottle of that or even the King Alexander because they're just they're just so high priced for the low ABV they give you. I mean, yeah, I mean, I when you throw the color and the chill filtering on top of that, I'm like, what the hell am I really paying for? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. All right. Well. Um, I'm going to dive into my first one. And so uh, the first one I poured here is uh, also a single cask. Um, and it is readily available, around $110, the Balvenie 15 year old single barrel. You get applause for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was one of those Intellix, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, it was always on the list. And I just kept skipping over it for some reason and not buying it. And I'm glad that I did, but I'm also glad I waited. Because what I learned when I waited, and this is a good tip for anybody looking to buy this. First of all, it's 47.8%. Now, take a look at the color of this. This is a really yeah. nice dark whiskey. So what I've learned from some good malt heads is that the Balvany Sherry Cask, 15-year-olds, are bottled both as first fills and as second fills. And the only way you can tell is if you actually... Pull the bottle out and look at it. So if it's dark like this, this is a first fill. But if you see it and it's like much lighter than this, it's a refill. So you can know just by the color what the difference is. Now, there are also some people who say that there's something about one of the codes on here that maybe tells you, but I've not been able to confirm that. So eyeball it. Um, this one is a first fill. I, I opened up the tube. I looked at it. I was like, that's probably first fill because it's quite dark. However, yeah, compared to this, yeah. like, like, even compared to this, it's like not even close, right? <laughs> like you can that's, still see it. Dude, this thing is like black. Anyways, I think I think that's still a first fill, though. I think you got a good one there. From oh yeah, this one, was, this one is definitely a first fill. I mean, compared to that Glenallan, but uh, and nothing looks like a first fill. But this is a first fill. Um, 
personally, like I, I was more interested in the first fill than the second fill um, or the refill. I'm sorry, no, refill is actually third fill. So it's first fill, second fill, and then refill is the third. Um, is that your first uh, time that you got to taste that one? Uh, not tonight, but I've, I've been submitting, but yeah, I've never had a bottle of it before. Um, gotcha. and honestly, like I, I, I just like Balvenie in general, I think makes, makes some really good malts. Um, they're not super pricey, but they're usually pretty well in terms of their craft. This one in particular, 47.8%, like I said, and it is just, it's a monster. It's a sherry monster, a lot of dried fruit. Would you like, I was trying to think of some basic really good intro sherry's mine you know other than your typical mckellen 12 glendronic 12 this yeah. one would be i think maybe it might not be great for the first time sherry drinker because it's uh higher okay. abb but it's definitely got to be a good for a second try i would think right yeah i think the yeah the, the, it's a little pricey and unfortunately i think the prices are going up a little bit but um you know yeah, I think this is like if you like sherry, you move on to something like this. But you know, yeah, Glendronic, the Glendronic Twelve is a great starter. Glenfarclas Twelve, to some degree, if you if you're in the UK and Glenfarclas Fifteen, definitely get the. 15. Oh yeah, the Fifteen is the where to go on that one. I've yeah. Heard, yeah, this man, I mean, it's like it's just it's got a great nose, um, ton of dried fruits, Christmas spice, um, but it's like subdued. It's all very like balanced and harmonious. Nothing is overpowering. Uh, it's got a little bit of vanilla sweetness to it. It's just great. Was it around 110 still, or was it mm -hmm. above that? 120. 120? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. It's been a few years ago since I bought a bottle, but I did love it, and I did uh, thought that the 110 to 115 price was good. If it's went up to 120, it's getting kind of, eh, but. I've seen it yeah, if it, I mean, I, that's probably the 125 mm -hmm. is probably my threshold on, on that whiskey, I'm thinking. Yeah, they also do a twenty-five single barrel sherry, but I you know, it's like nine hundred dollars or something. I'll tell you that this it's got a great development. It's a little bit grainy. It's a ton of rich dark. It's very dark fruit. Yeah, and you get some of the sweet. There's a little bit of juiciness, plum, raisin, just like dark berry, and then it, it's a nice long finish. It's just drying fruit, a little bit of the Christmas spice, a little bit of oakiness. No burn on this at all. It's just. It's an incredibly good whiskey. It's just a really solid. If they could guarantee you the first fill thing every time, then I'd say the above <laughs> twenty five might be a good price. But yeah, yeah if they're not able to guarantee it, so um, I think it's non chill filtered. Yeah, it is non chill filtered as well. It says here on the tube. I mean, Balvenie's tubes are just crazy. I mean, like there's yeah. more information on here than you could ever know what to do with, which is, I <laughs> I like. Um, I personally, you know, as a side note, Balvenie is my favorite presentation it's my favorite looking scotch bottle um oh, I just wow think okay perfect i love their labeling i love the design i mean i'm not the you know balvin not my favorite distillery but I, I do love their presentation and they give you a ton of information and yeah this 15 is really killer and it didn't take you 20 minutes to open the bottle like the mckellen 18 too right <laughs> <laughs> right I hated that. That's the only thing I hated about that bottle, man. It took forever to figure out how to open that damn thing. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Because it's the only whiskey bottle that's ever prevented Telex from getting inside. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you mid slip. <laughs> no, that was good. They were, not, uh, they, they were trying to make a Telex proof whiskey. They were trying to tell you, don't buy this. Don't buy <laughs> just to show, I cut that some bitch all the way around, baby. <laughs> they nothing preventing yeah. Telex from getting inside a whiskey bottle. <laughs> it could be Fort Knox, and I'll find a way in that sucker. <laughs> yeah, for sure, buddy, for sure. So what oh, you got, man, when are you getting ready to pour? I just saw this, and I, I was surprised. Jason's never had any Ben Ryak. I'm surprised, man. That's a really good uh, distillery. Usually, uh, they they got really good peated stuff. I've had good sherry stuff. I've had. Uh, if they if you can get a non Rachel Berry bottle, uh, I think um, didn't Billy what's his face from Glenelaki go to them or yeah, yeah it was Billy so Walker he, he from there I think oh he left and went okay and I she went so. there yeah, that's he, what it was he was she's there now I think well she's at Glen, she was at Bowmore and then Glendronic and I think now is there or maybe it was, she you're was right Glendronic she's at Glendronic now or both I don't know. 
I think she's at, at both. But if you can get like a, a, a Benrich bottle that's, uh, you know, I mean, I've had some, is it Septendism? I can't say it. That's a good one. Uh, the Solstice is a good one. They have a, they have some, some curiosities even a good 10 year repeated. So keep that in mind. The Solstice uh, is not easy to find anymore, sadly. Yeah, that's true. It's uh, hopefully they'll bring it back. It's so popular because I, I know people even three years ago was clamoring about how much they liked it. You know. Yeah, it was, it was a peated seventeen-year-old peated. The Solstice was a seventeen-year-old peated port ruby port finish, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll do a quick uh, just a, a, a kind of a drive-by on this. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the notes because we're going to review this together at some point. But I just wanted to kind of get the old palette wit and. Oh, that is a nice nose on that Edredauer. I just did a kind of a, a drive-by. Looks like it's going to be great on the viscosity. Could be the ABV because it's 56.2. Uh, huh, it's got a it – def, it definitely has the deep sherry notes that you would, you know, expect from a Oloroso, but there's also some um, combination of florals and sweetness on the side with it. Hmm. Huh. Which one is this that you're doing? This is the Edge Dower 21. Edge Dower 21. My God. <laughs> yeah, what I could believe ABV on that. Say again. What's the ABV? It's 56.2. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, when I saw this for sale, I was like, man, I've got to, I've got to get that. Because I've been w looking for an older Edredauer, and only, the oldest one I could find was that 12-year-old Caledonia. And finally, after doing some extra digging, I saw this, and I was like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a treat. By the way, if I mean, I don't know if there's any noobs in the house, but like uh, Old Rosso, which is what most of the things we're drinking tonight is, is a... Uh, it's a, it's a wine. It's a fortified wine. It's basically sherry that's been put into like is it like brandy or something. It's basically brandy or something else is added to like beef up its ABV. So it's like a some more heavily alcoholic um, wine, mostly made in Spain, but they have them. You can get Oloroso from I think a couple other places as well, but predominantly Spain. Oh man, I think uh, I think we're in for quite a treat on that. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm, I'm glad I brought this to the table to compare with the Allardyces. Now, both the 22 and the 24, I'm assuming, are at 46%, both of them, correct? Correct, yeah. So what I'll do to, to, to do the comparison more closely, I'll, um, I'll, I'll pour a little bit and I'll just add like a little bit of water to it to bring it a little lower on ABV, see if I can get it kind of comparable. But yeah, this is going to be a special bottle, I have a feeling. But also, I'll do the McKellen 18 on the side, too, with it and see, do some comparisons and, and see how it all matches up with it. Mm. I love Sherry. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, how would you... Um, so we gave a little background on, on the Oloroso, like what it is. How, like, if you were going to describe the flavors that you get out of Oloroso, like what would be the way you would describe it for folks? <laughs> Like I mean, usually, uh, the main two when you run into whiskeys, uh, both bourbon and scotch. That I'm, I mean, not bourbon, but uh, both uh, scotch and other whiskeys that from all over the world, is you. You primarily have Oloroso and PX are like your main two that you see. Sometimes you'll see some other ones. You'll see like Manzanilla, Amontillado, which are other types of of sherry's Fino. Madeira, yeah. yeah, there's so there's tons, but the uh, Oloroso and PX are like your primary. I guess the most prevalent and Oloroso to me has more of the dates, the dried fruits, the figs, uh, and, and sometimes you get a little more spice with, uh, Oloroso to me on the, on, you know, kind of comes with it together. Um, the PX side is, is definitely more in the sweeter end. it's not as dry. It's very sweet and, uh, almost syrupy in comparison. Um, yeah. and sometimes you get lucky and get a combination of both. And a good example of that is the parliament, the 21 year old from, uh, Glendronic. Um, and sometimes I think, uh, 15 revival too. And the 15, yeah. Malachi, yeah, yeah. Isn't the Lagavulin distillers, is that all PX or is that both? It's a PX finish. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So there, there's a good example. If you want to see what PX is like by itself, then, go for that uh, Lug of Lens Distillers Edition, and then you'll kind of get a hint of the sherry that's just PX only 
Uh, but it's not a yeah. maturation, unfortunately. Like a lot of the guys that we're getting into on this are all uh, matured, and they're not finishes. Uh, but this one's actually a finish. All are also cast is a finish. I think the uh, yeah the uh, McKellen is a mature maturation. Do you know if the LR dice is matured or finished? It's in, matured. Uh, it's all. So the interesting thing about the Glendronic core range. The 12, 15, and 21 are Oloroso PX, but the Allardyce 18 is all Oloroso. It's all mature. Yeah. All mature, too. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. One other thing I will, I'll, I'll add just to build on what you were saying about Oloroso is that, um, you know, it does, it, it has a lot of this, yeah, the same kind of flavor profiles that he was talking about. It's got some spice. It's got some kind of, there's dry fruits. There's, there's sometimes juicier, like darker fruits that you get out of that, whereas with the PX, it tends to be brighter, sweeter stuff. Um, an interesting yeah, like strawberries thing, and raspberries and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and something that's really interesting, I think, about Oloroso that you can kind of, as you get into single malts, test a bit, is this works particularly well with NAS whiskeys that have had like an Oloroso or a sherry maturation or a sherry finish, is when you're nosing it, try to tell whether or not you're getting dry, like drier fruit notes or if you're, or, you know, which is almost bordering on like Christmas spice, you're kind of nutmeg, clove kind of stuff. Or if you're getting more like juicy plum, raisin, you know, like, like, well, raisins are dry, but you know what I mean? Like juicy plum, like blackberry, blueberry. And what that'll tell you is kind of really on an NAS whiskey, like, is there some older stuff in there? Because what, what happens is, is when you're putting a single malt in, in into a sherry cask for maturation, right? Obviously, like the longer it stays in there, the more oxygen is working on it. And the more oxygen works on the whiskey, the more of the drier fruit notes are going to come out. So what you might be able to notice, like with some NAS whiskeys where you're not quite sure what the age is, is if you start nosing it and you're starting to pick up more dry fruit than maybe juicy dark fruit, you're going to, you know, it's a good sign that, you know, there's, there's some decently aged whiskey in there because it takes a while to bring those notes out. And that really only happens through time because of oxidization. Yeah, please go ahead and feel free, guys, to, to share with us your favorite sherry bottle. It could be anything. It could be young, old, uh, middle, this doesn't matter, with peat, without peat. Just pick your best favorite um, sherry bottle. Top shelf Justin. Is this the same Dustin we know, or is this a different Dustin? <laughs> it is, yeah. He, uh, uh, he was on the happy hour earlier, and um, he's officially uh, changed his, uh, his, his name. Ah, well, there He's you the go, man. Tea, man. He's the big T. The big T <laughs> for value. I'm going to start getting, sounding like Dick Vitale before the night's over. <laughs> Baby! All right. He goes to the top shelf, grabs the Glen going 25. He's on fire. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> oh man, and he, I think I think he's got a good point here uh, for value. The Glen going twenty five, and there, uh, uh, that's one I haven't actually had. You've had the twenty five because you got your own bottle of that, right? I do, and actually, it, it came at the recommendation from him. And the interesting thing about it was, I I picked it up. It was about this was about a year ago. This time it was three hundred thirty, and now it's four fifty, and like the prices have went up crazy on it. So Damn. it's kind of went outside my price range, which is. Uh, you know, what can you do? But he's a diaper daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give him one for that. All right, I'm gonna go with my second sherry here. But yeah, let us know in the chat. Did Tam do batch? Yeah, that's a great one. The batch drinks are nice. My favorite was the batch one. I like the batch two too. The batch three is when it kind of went a little iffy for me, and I didn't do the four. I mean, that might even have a five out by now. I'm not sure, but the. Um, the, the, definitely the, the first two were, were awesome. First fill indie bottle, first fill. I'm not sure which one he's referring to in that one. Oh, here we go. Yep, the Glendronic 18 or maybe the single cast Glenrothes. Yep. Ooh, nice. You may, he must prefer Oloroso than PX if he likes the, uh, the Glendronic 18 more so than others, I imagine. Yeah, I agree. As you draw 10 unfiltered barrel pick. Wow, that's that's definitely a specific there. I'll die 16 and Tam Dew's nine, uh, one have uh, been favorites. That's cool. I'm just curious to see what uh, some other distilleries that might pop in here. Oh, yeah. Don't like the spring make sherry, but the, oh, yeah, this, yeah. 
The Hazelburn Olorosos are amazing. I was yeah. looking. <laughs> they are. They were good. Think, that 13 was awesome. I think I had like a 13 or 14. I can't remember what the year was, but it was a Hazelburn Oloroso, and it was really good. Yeah. 13 Oloroso is probably his favorite sherry. Wow. Yeah, great whiskey. A couple of votes for that one, then. I'll have to I'll have to get that. Do you have any sherry Cahoman on your shelf? Yes. Um, I've got a few. Um the original's not shared, I don't believe. The uh, 2008 vintage was straightforward, I think, ex bourbon. The Loch Gorm, I think that's got sherry in it. I can't remember. It's a, yeah, it's a sherry cast maturation. So the Loch Gorm is definitely one that uh, I always, that was my first Cahoman bottle and remains one of my favorites. Um, Me too. Yeah, that's the full maturation of sherry on that one, right? Yep. It's and then they got mix, right? Then the red wine cast matured. That's just red wine cast. We're not going to count that. The Senegas is sherry. It's kind of a, a kind of a, a really, um, I think like a split. I think it's yep. like half and half. And to, that one is definitely more on the Oloroso end. It's extremely savory and extremely dry for me. Um, the Saw Turns cask is not, I don't believe. Um, now that's cast strength next to that. That is a uh, bourbon. Then I have the STR which was uh, just a, you know, charred, staved and all that. And then the, uh, the Amburic was a com combination of sherry and port. That was a great whiskey. If you remember that one, the Amburic, the mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember we tasted that. That was good. And two coming up for Eric and I both, we haven't reviewed yet. They're both slightly peated Kilhomans, which is interesting enough. They're Jack Rose picks. And one is a uh, bourbon and one is a sherry. And I think we're both going to really have a lot of fun with uh, those two. Yeah, those are going to be good. I mean, anything that comes out of Jack Rose. I'm actually doing a, a tasting with Jack Rose of some older Will It Rise on, uh, on Thursday, which is going to be a lot of fun. No way, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you knew the guy, for God's sakes. <laughs> no, no. Um, so I'm part of this, I think I've told you, I'm part of the Philadelphia Whiskey Society. And um, so we've actually done, we get a lot of like tastings and stuff, virtual tastings we've been doing. We were, we were going to go on a field trip there to do a whole bunch of tastings with them right before COVID happened. But um, yeah, uh, the the guy that runs our, our, our whiskey society here in Philly just kill, kills it, man. Um we, we got no shortage of great tastings. And so, yeah, we're doing this. So if you're in the South Jersey, Philadelphia area, check it out. PWS.com or what is it? What is the website? I think it's, I got one of these glasses right here. <laughs> it's not actually on here. Yeah. It's just, just Google Philadelphia whiskey society. It's awesome. Tell him he needs to get his bet down to Severna park and start a whiskey society. Yeah, he? <laughs> man, for real, dude. He's, he's great. He's from Taiwan and is always oh, going wow. back and forth, bringing tons of stuff. And yeah, he's, he's got great, great stuff. Well, I'm going to put away my Balvenie. Uh, again, highly recommend this one. If Me you're too. looking for a budget first fill, um, you know, something that's not $100 and you just want to really get into sherry, I can't say enough about this bad boy. Naked Grouse. This is a first fill blended malt. 43%. This is about $30. Full tons of sherry flavor in this. I'm actually going to throw this in my blind to put it up against some of the more uh, expensive ones. But Wow. This, is a, this is a serious dark horse whiskey. If you've never had it, grab yourself a bottle. It won't break the bank. It is all uh, first fill Oloroso sherry. NAS, of course, colored and chill filtered, but, you know, it's naked grouse or it's from the grouse. But I'm telling yeah. you, this is one that I always have. It's great anytime. Really recommend the naked grouse. I'm going to have that's to get that myself because that's one bottle I've never tried. Yeah. yeah. I've only tried the smoky and didn't like it, but that one I've heard is really, really good. So I'm going to have definitely uh, give it yeah. another stab. And so the next sherry bomb that I'm going to do is something I just cracked open. This is a Glen Allocky 2006. Um, yeah, you can see how dark this crazy thing is. Uh, 677 bottles of it. It's 14 years old. It's uh, Oloroso Punchin, non chill natural, 61% ABV. It is part of this uh, trilogy. It's called the Trilogy Part Two. Uh, which is an exclusive release to a place in the UK. So uh, I'm going to take a look at what this bad boy is looking like in the glass. I mean, that is, <laughs> That's dark, yeah. come on. Like that color is absurd. Beautiful. One in a of the, good way. <laughs> yeah. One of the most amazing looking whiskeys I've seen. I mean, that's like, it looks like church wine, like just this, Almost like bloody church wine. Church. <laughs> <laughs> you know wow. I mean? Like like that that it, 
It's like simultaneously dark red, but also bright. It's what, happened, what happened to Eric? He caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm digging this. It comes in a really ostentatious kind of, you know, Glen Allocky, uh thing. I like the, I like the, I like the simplicity of, of, of the I do too. It's, yeah, it's really not ostentatious, but yeah, I agree. Um is that still with uh, Billy Walker there, or is that a, is this? Yeah, a new- yeah. So this was um, distilled in two thousand six and bottled in two thousand twenty. Yeah, so this is a relatively new um, natural color, non chill filtered as all Glenallochies are, which is freaking exciting, and um, mm. this would be a nice sherry bomb. Sixty one percent. I mean, this is on hazmat level. <laughs> hazmat. Yeah. You won't know it from the nose. It's got a little bit to it, but otherwise, just deep dark red fruit, spice, and that's the ki- that's the killer. On I'm going over to the McAllen 18, and I mean it's a it's a nice whiskey. The the killer thing is it's only 43. percent That's I'm like, what were they thinking? <laughs> Money. I love the natural color. I mean, it's got a nice you know nice natural color, but. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's the, but they they don't they don't worry about charging you the money, do they? <laughs> no. Yeah, and uh, folks didn't see we did do a, a tasting of the Macallan twelve and eighteen a couple of weeks ago. I think this was one of the few whiskeys Telex and I have so far like really disagreed on was that eighteen. But um, it's really, yeah, go check it out if you're interested in seeing the tasting. This has got a really nice slow moving legs on it, not surprisingly. All right. I still enjoy the taste of it, though. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh man! Woo. Hopefully, a good way. <laughs> wow! Hot. That is that is intense. Uh, a lot of spice, a lot of alcohol. Some to well. What's the spices that you're picking up off of it? Cinnamon Red Hots. Uh, like the candy. Do you detect any black pepper at all in it? A bit. It's more chili pepper. Juicier. Gotcha. Um, really, really intense flavor, though. Um, not as viscous as you'd expect. Do you get any, it's like got incredible development. It's like it's got this really nice dark fruit sweet fruit thing that are kind of like working together but very very distinct um not one more power than the other it but that's that's all oloroso right yeah it's all oloroso okay but then you get this really nice um yeah it's like it's like juicy fruit gum cherry pomegranate ginger a little bit of orange Do you get any, sul- any sulfuric notes or any funkiness going on no no sulfur, a- which is great no matchstick burning, mm-hmm. anything, any of that either. That's cool. No, which is, yeah, which is really nice. Thankfully, on this Edger Dower, I was afraid that I was going to get like a lot of um, of that sulfuric kind of uh, note you sometimes get. I get that on the Deanson 20 uh, uh, pretty heavily. I don't mind it. Some people don't like it very much. You also get it like on the Bowmore 15 Darkest and some of the Benevises of the Benevis 10 distillery bottle. Um, I don't mind it, but this, this Edger Dower surprisingly has very, very, very little, if at all, uh, notes of that kind of funky sulfuric thing that you do get on some of their older ones. I'm not sure if the age like takes that quality down. Maybe that's why the Benevis 10 has it and some of the older ones don't. Do you know if, if that affects the sulfuric properties in whiskey at all? I don't. I mean, it... Yeah, I, I remember. I, I, it's escaping me what the whole thing was behind the sulfuricness of it, but it has something to do with. Oh God, I can't remember now. That's what happens when you're drinking sixty-one percent whiskey. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. There's for like me a then. whole like story behind like behind like something that's done to the barrels and how they're treated, which uh, is what imparts some of the more sulfuricness. I think it has to do with like literally what they use. Like they burn stuff inside of it, and that can be part of it. 
yeah if anybody else has any more details definitely share it with us because it's been a while since i've researched some of this stuff and then it, you kind of do that when you're first getting into your journey and then you get so accustomed <laughs> to drinking all the whiskey it's like you forget all the little things that you learned when you first started because I, I remember hearing similar kind of things about that but uh I wasn't sure, like the Glenfarclases are other ones that typically do have that sulfuric property to it. The 25, I definitely, I even get it off that yeah. uh, to a degree. They direct fire their stills too. I mean, they're one of the few people that still direct fires, like them, Glenfiddich. And then Maybe that's people. why. Where you get a little bit, like I get some of that kind of copper metallicness on Glenfarclas as well as some of the sulfur. I'm trying to think glymphitic sherry. If, it, if I've ever had any glymphitic sherry releases, I mean the 15 Solera. I can't remember if that's that, that's a sherry bottle, isn't it? If I remember correctly. Man, I don't even know. Uh, let me take a quick look and see, because it's been a while since I've had that, and I, I'm trying to remember if I had any like sulfuric properties from it. That one is ex bourbon, ex sherry, and new American oak, so it's got some. But uh, it's uh, sherry and mid-year wine. Really? Oh, never mind. That's no. That's just the the, the type of uh, oh, the Solera is from and used in Spain as production of sherry and Madeira wine, and, and rarely ever used in whiskey. So, okay. Hmm. Well, I put a few drops of water on this Glenalkey, and man, it is extending that development. It toned down a little bit of that hot spice that was coming off it and god it's really good a lot happening in this and it's coming in like different surges like even on the back end of this is like i'm getting almost this kind of buttery like buttery toast note mm. um which is just odd and again it's good though yeah i like it it's grapes it's um like deep red grape it's like you're having a piece of toast with freaking concord jelly on it or something like that on the end of it Burnt really toast, interesting man. stuff. I like a burnt toast. I, I kind of get that off the uh, Lagavulin 8 a little bit, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I'm trying to see if any other Glenfiddichs have sherry besides that uh, 15. Off my memory, I, I didn't know they had a, uh, a regular 18. Looks like that one's a Laroso sherry and bourbon cast, both. I don't think I've ever tried the Glenfiddich 18. You're not a huge fan of that distillery, right? I'll be honest, I haven't had a ton of Glenfiddich. And the ones I've had, I mean, honestly, the ones that I, <laughs> ones that I've had are that experimental series. Which yeah, I, I liked the Project Twenty. Um, yes, the IPA one I thought was better than expected. The the rum and cane or fire and cane, which is the peated rum one, was eh, uh, okay, but. Um, I've not, I mean, I've had the Glenfiddich 12. I've, I've never had their 18. So I'm not okay. really sure. And then of course I had that Glenfiddich 21 last week. The rum cast. Yeah. That rum cast actually for a rum finish. That's one of my favorite ones. I have to say it was, it was better than I thought it was. It was definitely better than I thought. Yeah. So I might have to try the 18 just, just to see what their sherry is. Cause I'm just curious if a Glenfiddich would, like you said, if they're doing that fire deal, if it's going to have a lot of sherry involved with it or not. Oh yeah, the eighteen uh, Holland Park. That's a great. That's a great uh, option there, Richie Z. I'd say. Yeah. What do they use? I'm trying to remember what sherry they use. If they even say what's in that one. One second. I think Highland Park is all Oloroso. I mean, at least I think those core range ones are. Hmm. Yeah, they just, they just say X sherry. Um, so you. Oh, here we go. Uh, I found it. Uh, the cast build specifications set off the Jerez to be filled with Oloroso sherry. Three years later, they get them back, and the journey begins. Okay. So, yeah, it is Oloroso. You're, you nailed it. European – they both use European and American oak. That's what threw me off on the on the uh, Holland Park 18. Hmm. But that is a, that's a great. I mean, if you can afford, I mean, it's like one thirty. It is on the pricer end. The Belvini uh, fifteen single that Eric said, and also the Holland Park eighteen is a really great bottle if you're getting into sherry. I'd say to start with, even. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Any, any what, what do you guys find the sulfur on the most? Uh, for me, it's a cross between that Ben Nevis 10 and the uh, Beaumont Darkest 15 and maybe the uh, Glenfarclas uh, bottles. But that's the first thing that popped in my head is, is uh, for sulfur. 
anything for you that that you get it that this one alecky i i I, i'm gonna be totally honest with you like i'm gonna need some time with this whiskey there is a lot going on in here and i can't like i gotta pick this apart a bit i will tell you i mean this was about 130 i got it cheaper i mean it's probably closer to like 180 190 again 14 years well yeah it's like 150 this is a single cask uh you know, it's again, it's near like hazmat level, sixty-one percent. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of alcohol in this. The water has just brought out just like a ton of stuff here, man. That's good um, though. It's all like very balanced, which is what I'm surprised the most about. The the Balvenie fifteen is just a bomb of like heavy sherry. You know, like yeah. just, that's what you get. This. It's there, but there's other stuff at play here, man. There's like strange, like graham cracker, the buttered toast thing. There's like a little smoke. There's orange. There's this like dry honey. There's just a lot of other stuff going on in here that I'll be honest with you. Even on the nose, it doesn't smell like that. That Balvany jumps out of the glass as a sherry bomb. It's just, it's just, you you know, you get it even close to your face. It's just like tons of dry fruit. This it's there, but it's less. It's less in your face. There's other stuff happening. It, this is really interesting, and um, I'm gonna have to. I'll have to bottle up a sample of this for you, man. And this is a. This. I'm not sure where I'm landing on this. I. Th- I mean, it's good. I definitely like it. But I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm thinking that you know this is one of those whiskeys where I'm just gonna need to spend some time with it, man. That's the Glenelaki, right? Uh, I will have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had my eye on the 25. I'll try to pick up as for us as well. And maybe we can combine some in a sh- for a show in the uh, future. Also, uh, I'm, I'm with you, Richie. It doesn't bother me either. And uh, Jason said the same thing. I, no, it, I, I was just saying that that note, sometimes it does bother some people. So I was just curious to what where you usually get it from versus other ones. But yeah, Jason's right. Mortlock, I forgot about that one. Definitely has uh, more sulfur. Uh, than a usual, I'd say, comparatively to the other ones that I can think of. But yeah, it, it doesn't bother me per se. It's just one of those funky notes you sometimes get. Springbanks has them too, sometimes I've noticed on some of theirs. Like that burgundy uh, cask was a, uh, it's not sherry, I guess. That's more of a red wine, but uh, it definitely has some funky sulfuric stuff going on. Have you had that one before, Eric? Say that again? The Springbank 12 burgundy? No, no, I wish. Um... <laughs> I have found that before. I had a bottle a long time ago, and then uh, I did know a guy that found one like a year or two later. So they are out there. If I find something, I'll let you know because it's definitely worth a just a, a pickup. Some people love it, some people hate it. But if you like, if you ever had Burgundy wine before by chance? No, I haven't. I, mean, oh. I know that that's like, yeah, it's not something I've spent much time drinking. But um... if you like New York style cheesecake, like literally in a glass, that's what that Spring Bank 12 Burgundy tastes like, man. It's like New York cheesecake in a glass. Or Ooh, like a good version uh, of it. Yeah, I, I mean, that sounds delicious. In fact, I do have a Burgundy whiskey uh, uh, up here. This is a Glenmorangie Burgundy Wood finish. Um, oh, he's bringing up the old stuff. An old, it's an old, dusty, early 2000s Glenmorangie. Uh, a whole little setup here. I have to put to crack this one open sometime. That would be very cool, man. Yeah, I would, these, these, I feel, this could be fun. There's a Madeira, there's a port, and a sherry as well. So this could be this could be a fun one. I've never had a Burgundy Wood one before. It, it, and it's Glendronic too. That's the weird thing about it. it, it I, I've never heard of them doing some of those types of casts. So that's going to be really. Uh, I feel kind of bad though because it's almost like touching a museum. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Those are some nice dusty bottles, man. Yeah, they're they're cool. Um, yeah, I'll have to open those up one of these days. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a little bit more water and get these allardices poured out, and then uh, sure. we'll get ready for a face off. Sounds good to me. Face off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. All right, man. The uh, what do you about you guys? I know some people uh, like sulfur, some people hate it, some people are indifferent to it. Matt D says the McAllen triple cask all day sulfur bomb. Even halfway through the bottle, when I got thought I had to calm down, the sulfur came back, and it's not a good sulfur. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Matt, because I, I, I've I've have the sherry oak cask here, and I've had the um, 
oh, what is it, the double? They have a double. And then I saw that they had a triple version, a triple cask of an 18. And I thought, I wonder if it's uh, worth a pickup. But if it's a sulfur bomb, uh, I don't mind it. But I have to be in the mood for it. So I'll, have, I'll definitely wait till, uh, you know, I, I find a better deal on something like that, I'd say. Looks like uh, Jason Coates got a hell of a deal on something here. Yeah, the full volume is a is a is a good whiskey. That's a Holland Park that I. That's a bourbon cast though, a straightforward pretty much. But that one is a pretty decent. Yeah, Daniel doesn't mind the sulfur. Most people seem like they uh, are with it. There's sulfur that is skunky and gross. Yeah, I guess it depends on the. Uh, and sometimes I think people get mistaken, Cohen. You might remember this term, cork taint. Uh, I think some people might get thrown off by cork taint when it comes to uh, how that affects a whiskey, especially when there's sulfur involved as well. And that might be the skunky, gross version that you've picked up. Because I have had that happen before where I thought it was going to be okay, but the cork taint actually made it worse. And it didn't end up being all that great. Don't really mind it or perhaps yet come across something as overpowering or off-putting sulfur note. Yeah, the only bottles that really really have a lot of it that i remember is that more 15 darkest the ben nevis 10 the um i got it off of glenn tour a while back but it was an independent bottling i i hate dylan ryan as well jason i'm right there with you uh that's one thing that uh i saw that hold on where was that yeah yeah Whiskey Ace likes the deal, man. If you like deal, you should pick up that Redemption from um, Baltimore, Maryland. I think they actually, uh, it's from Maryland, but they process in Indiana or something. But uh, Redemption Rye has got a shit ton of dill in it. I, I, I don't like that part of, uh, yeah, I'm a dill hater. <laughs> the 12 year old triple cast. 18 could be something completely different. I might have had a bad bottle even. Yeah, that does happen. Um, and it is sometimes it's hard. Like I said about that cork taint, you have to be uh, careful. There's, it's there. I'll never forget when I was hanging out, luckily with um, Scotch for Dummies back in the day with uh, John Glazer that runs Compass Box, and we were doing the story of the Spaniard. He brought a bottle out. We pop it open, go into it, cork taint. He's like right away. Take it away. Don't want it anywhere near anything else. It's got to go. Got a different one, and it was a completely different experience. So that that does happen. Thankfully, it's rare, but it's you know time to time it does uh, affect a, a whiskey rather uh, intensely in a bad way. So that that uh, is something to keep a lookout for. Uh, bad corks are the culprit on some of these guys. And I'm sure you've had a couple of distilleries where you're like, wow, this is a really loose cork. But uh has some looser ones I've noticed than others. Um, I think McKellen's are fairly loose. If I remember correctly, uh, Vlogovillans might be like that too. But this Edredar has got a nice, pretty tight fitting, you know, thick, nice cork on it. So it, it does make a big a bit of a difference when it comes to that. Light dill um, that disappears into spice. That's pretty deep. Yeah. If the dill is, is very, very faint, then um, I wouldn't, you know, worry about it as much. Eric Waite has a good, a recent good video on quarantine. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Eric Waite's uh, another whiskey tuber. I definitely check him out on the side. He definitely does a lot of wine and uh, he would be someone I would listen to about cork taint in uh, some of the the uh, intricacies and details of it. High West, I do like the High West uh, campfire I've had, and the I think they do the Midsummer's Night Strams too. I like those for um, for the rice side of things. Gary K maybe so that twenty one. Ooh, I think I missed that one. Diageo releases often have good corks. Yeah, I think I, I was. I, th I think the Lago one actually might have a better one than I'm remembering. I'm trying to remember the, some of the ones that were looser, but they do. That does happen. Licorice, yes. 
That's uh, I'm the same way, Jason. I, I'm not a black licorice. I, I really, I mean, I prefer black. I really hate red. Uh, but if it's got that like really nice star anise or just anise type of note, I mean, I know that Ardbeg Wee Beastie has a, a shit ton of uh, that note on it, and I actually don't mind it on that. But I, I'm not a big fan of licorice either, so I know what you mean. Richie doesn't get any deal on the Albertas. <laughs> That's funny. The composite corks. Yeah, that must be what it is because uh, some of these distilleries do have a, a much better version than others Others I've known. Noticed it. Think about selling some uh, older whiskeys to some of them. Oh. Yeah, if you're, I would say, I mean, if you're just, uh, you, you probably could get away with just selling it to friends in, in an easy manner without doing auctions and stuff because you do have to pay like fees and all that kind of nonsense if you do the auctions, which is never really fun or worth it. But uh, I'm sure if you, uh, if there was like a, I mean, I don't want to have a bunch of people advertising, I guess, uh, all the time. But if you had a bottle uh, that you were getting rid of, then I would be like, all right, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, uh, wouldn't mind seeing a couple of those. Dill knows. <laughs> wow. High West El Rocho, Muscat and Port. That sounds good. Hey, there's Mr. Malt. Oop. Hey. There he is. Sorry. I killed it, and then I brought you back. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I was afraid. I, I When I hit the wrong button, I was afraid I, I kicked you out, so I'm glad I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't, too, because we're about to get into some, some real fun here, my friend. What do you think about anise? Do you like uh, anise uh, or like black licorice notes on your whiskeys, or do you no, mind? I, I don't. I, I don't like black licorice. I don't like. Um, I really don't like anise in general. Um, well, I like it more in food than I do in in uh, whiskey, you know, or like drinks. I don't like ouzo. I don't like. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Turkey, I had. Um, Rocco, which is like that are like national drink, which is again another one of these very like heavy anise liqueur like liqueur drinks that just I, I can't do it. Um, do you like absinthe? <sighs> I mean, I don't reach for it, you know. Uh, I, I, it's okay. I like it's hard to say no. <laughs> absinthe is closer to Fernet, I think, at times. Um, I don't mind Fernet, but yeah, ab, I don't know, man. It's like where the line kind of goes. Yeah, once you get from go from absinthe to the more. Uh, what was the other one you said? The um, like Zambuca, the Uzo, the Uzo. Yeah, that's I had a. I used to get that at Greek restaurants, and you have to be in the mood for something like that because it's so licorice. <laughs> licorice like I guess I should say. Yeah. Corey Vick and LHP Valknut showed me just how wonderful anise is and scotch. Yeah, that is a good point. That, that those they do have a little bit of it, not much, but just enough to, to detect in that. That wee beastie has a shit ton of anise in it. Did you did you you like the wee beastie a bit, didn't you? Or was that well, not, it was okay. Yeah. It probably was the anise that kind of threw you off a little bit. I it have a feeling. Just, yeah, it was very it was very light. I was very young. It was very peppery. Um I didn't particularly love it. Um but you know I, again, I, I just I like the ten a lot more. I'm the same way with Cohen. I'm not a huge fan of florals. That's why when I uh, started out with the Glamorangie ten, I was kind of like, oh, this is better than bourbon, but not really my forte. But thank God I held out for other less floral whiskeys, uh, like the La Santa and some of the other ones. Once you get that cask, you know, yeah, maturation going, it's a lot better. Definitely, I'm just getting my. Uh, Aller, Aller die poured out. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and I'll have the chat so I don't. See yeah, anything. you can you can feel free to get yours poured too. And you can oh, I poured them place. earlier because I knew they they were going to take a little while okay. to uh, air out. Yeah, I'm going to let these sit here for a couple minutes and then. Um... I'm just getting the last drop out of the bottle because. I'm like trying to get every little bit I can out here. So, so Telex, when you pour them out, do you know which I put numbers on those, right? Yes. Yes. Do you remember which one is number one and which no one is number two? You got a 19 and a 20, actually. Oh yes, the 19 and the 20. Okay. So um when we start, if you want to turn off the chat for like this portion of it. Yeah, I'd already I'll let the it. folks know. I'll let the oh you did turn it off. 
Yeah, it's it's gone now. I just okay. did it a second ago. All right, y'all. So I'll let everybody know in the chat. So um, just as a little way of background, so um, Glendronic was a dis is a Highland Distillery. They make very sherried whiskeys. Um, you probably already know that. What you might not know is that they were mothballed for about six years, and during that time, a whole bunch of whiskey sat in casks that wasn't being sold. So uh, when they reopened, what was it about uh, 10, 12 years ago, something like that? Uh, all of this older whiskey started getting bottled. And each one of the Glendronic core range allegedly is pretty much understood that this is the case, but uh, they've never said it officially, I think. Uh, for six years, they increased in age before they went back to their normal age statement. So, for example, when they started, when they reopened, the 12 year whiskeys were 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, 17s marked as 12s, and then they would fall back um to the 12 after six years the same thing happened with the 15 in up until 2019 the glendronic allardyce was getting older and older as its minimum age before it got to the new stuff that they put into barrels after they reopened there you go so what that basically means in practice is that if you look at the dates on the allardyce oh i should also mention the parliament is still going so a few more years worth the parliament right now if you buy one that has a scan date of 2021 that's going to be a 26-year-old parliament. Uh, tomorrow, next year, it'll be 27 years old. And then in 2023, it'll fall back. Uh, Peter White, thank you for the date uh, info on that. So basically, uh, with the Allardyce here, the dates here on these bottles reflect actually whiskey that is older than the 18-year-old age statement. So what we are going to do tonight, uh, I've poured two samples for Telex, and he's going to try them blind. One of them is a Glendronic 18 Allardyce, which is 2017, so 22 years old, or uh, and a Glendronic Allardyce 2019, which is 24 years old, which is the oldest one before they, in 2020, went back to 18 years old. So uh, I'm going to drop in the chat which ones are which. So Telex is going to be drinking uh, a number 19 and a number 20. Um, and so the, the goal here is just to see if Telex notices major differences between the two and then maybe guesses which one is older. Um, and then I'm going to just share this info with everybody. And you can start with either number you want, Telic. You don't need to do them in any like specific order or whatever. All so right. Then, I'm going to start with this 19 one just because it's, you know, a number. <laughs> yeah. It's got a great color. It's uh, it is dark. I'm trying to see. This is the. I'm 19. drinking the 19 right now too, as you guys all know in the chat what that is. I cannot tell a difference in color. If there is any, it's extremely subtle for me to to tell any difference looking at it. Uh, when the next thing I'll go to is the uh, how does it hold its legs? And with the ABV being so similar, it's probably not going to be much difference with that. But just to see if there's any like difference, I don't see anything really. So let's go back to just the 19 and go for a. Yeah, so these are for both of these again, 46% ABV, non chill filtered, natural color. It is fully matured in uh, uh, Oloroso sherry. Interesting. This is, uh, they're both Oloroso. The 19 has a sweeter nose on it to me. The 20 has more of a spicier nose. Interesting. So that's kind of the first difference I notice out of the two. The 19 definitely is it's on the sweeter end. If I didn't know it was Oloroso, I would almost suspect it might be PX. That's how sweet it smells to me. Interesting. I get a lot of dried fruits on the 19. The number 19 and on the 20, um, more vanilla and spice. That's what I'm picking up on it at least. Yeah, vanilla and spice. In the, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Definitely, definitely more of, of the 19 to me is fruitier than the, than the 20. Mm. Mm. It's oh. amazing. These are so, it's the same bottle, but it's just two years difference. That's so yeah. amazing. All right, let's go for a sippy sip on the 19. Do it. Oh, that is so good. Oily, coats the mouth, wow. wheat, butterscotch, and like tons of just 
dark, juicy berries. Man, that is. Oh, wow, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that is that, serious business, man. That tastes dead up like great Oloroso Sherry to me. Yeah, That's man. what an Oloroso Sherry dram should taste like so far on that 19. Now, let me go back to this 20. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have a little water just to. Wow, I don't. I, this finish is still going, man. Yeah, it's delicious. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up that finish to to go for another sip. But wow, it's very. It's very oily. Very. Good. It's. It's like a combination of plums and currants, and mm -hmm. it's got some really nice dried figgies, dates. It's it, it's it, not a lot of spice in this first one, but that's okay. I love the fruit in it. It's it's so far my favorite nose. I think I prefer the nose of the nineteen, maybe just slightly, not not by much, but the number nineteen, yeah. But if I'm looking, I, uh, for I tend to agree with you. I like the nose on the nineteen, the number nineteen over the number twenty as well. But if I'm in the mood for a spicy nose. I still get some sherry in there, but it's not near. It's not nearly the same. It's weird how different it is. Yeah, I get a little bit more wood wood spice on this one. Me too. Yeah, the oak is, is definitely more prevalent. Oh, yeah, maybe almost clove. I'm gonna go for a taste. Hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very similar though to the first, but hmm. Ooh, that th that finish is is really damn good. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, I got a big like conquered grape, like the size of Montana, man. <laughs> wow. Oh man, a little bit of alcohol too. I'm picking up a little alcohol on it, but um, again, arrives sweet, similar to the other one, but the number nineteen, the twenty arrives sweet, but. Yeah, it does feel like it's there's a little more creaminess to it, but also a little more spice and a little bit of alcohol. But they're, they're very close, but I think the noses were the most different. Um, but you're right. Uh, this finish is also really fantastic. And I'm getting more on, on this 20. I, I actually, now I'm kind of liking it more because this finish has also got more of like a little spice kick at the end. I get mm -hmm. more of a, like a cinnamon and a, Dried red, a cinnamon powder, something like that. And some nutmeg even and some like a little like like a little smidgen of black pepper not very much at all just a little mm -hmm. bit enough to detect it but it's amazing that these are the same bottles in only two years difference and for them to be so different that's amazing to me <laughs> yeah uh. so i'm not just i'm not just I'm, I'm not being like crazy. You're getting kind of similar notes as far as the. the I am. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, I think I think like I noticed differences in the noses, but I think you were getting more spice on the on the num uh, bottle number twenty. By the way, I'm, uh, in case folks missed it, I'm going to repost what numbers so we're, we're saying nineteen twenty a lot. Uh, those are the ones that Telex has. I want to make sure everybody knows. So I'm going to repost that in just a moment here in the chat for everybody. Oh, man, Allardyce versus Allardyce. The, the the great thing about this is they're both winners. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't think I'll be honest, out, of that year. <laughs> out of the core range. What is your favorite of the Glendronic? For me, yeah, uh, man. Um, the the twelve is a quintessential. I think everyone should get that bottle uh, and always have a bottle of the 12 on their shelf. But I do know and notice that the revival is a huge step forward when you go to the 15, especially if you can get it for under a hundred bucks still, which is still, you know, possible to do if you do your homework. Mm -hmm. The uh, 18 is, is great, but I typically don't gravitate towards just pure Oloroso uh, sherries like that. Unless I'm in the mm -hmm. mood. I really like the parliament parliament because I get the best of both worlds with the PX and the Oloroso and I get the age. The, the only crappy thing is the price is like 190 or so, you know, for a, a bottle of it, if you're lucky to find it a good price. Um, but the parliament's also, like you said, those bottles now are really getting older and older and older than 21. With that said, man, oh man, I like them all really. But if I had to like pick one, 
I usually don't base things off price, but with this, I'm going to. I'm going to say the 15 is probably the best bang for the buck. Where you get both the PX and the Laroso, and you get all of everything together on one thing. The only bad thing about the Revival, it's rarer to see than the other three. I see the 12, 18, and 21 all day long, and I sometimes don't see the 15. So, Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I agree. I... <sighs> I I think the Allardyce is still the one that I go for, but the 15 is fantastic. Um, I really just think that the 12, I, I don't mind. Like, I like, I, I'll be honest, I think the McAllen Sherry Oak 12 is actually a little, I would prefer slightly, which is bizarre, I know. But uh, I think I, I did a little comparison review. They were both like three fives. I mean, I think they're good Sherry, good Sherry 12s. I mean, you can't get probably money better heavily sherry 12s than those I, but i do yeah. some, for some reason like the mccallan a little bit more uh but the 12 yeah i don't know if it's a must-have for me i mean i it's 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 there um i do like some other ones that aren't fully sherry but have sherry influence like glenn going 12 yeah like something that's kind of right there but yeah for the most part I'm, i mean i'm right there with you man i i love the the, the 15 is freaking fantastic the the parliament is great um, but I, I, yeah, I, I do. There's something about the Allardyce, man. It, it just, it just does it for me. Um, and so I actually, speaking of, I just put two drops of water on each and I'm going to go into it and see what's going on. I'm going to let you go first on that because I'm, okay. I'm still kind of going between, um, and I'm, I'm wanting to add water just at the very end because I don't have anything more else to pour, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. It is really, really well done on both of these. I mean, if I bought either one, I wouldn't be disappointed. If I had to say which one do I prefer, let me let me do the water first before we uh, do yeah, that. Go ahead. So far, I will say this. It's funny. I was thinking of, like, what do I like and what is the age? So I'll give you, like, a, a pre-water uh, statement, and I'll give you a post-water statement. So pre-water... I think that the 19 definitely has more of, of the fruits and is definitely on the sweeter side. The 20, I think, is a little bit more refined. It's got a little more spice kick. It's got it's it's ironically got more of like a bourbon type of cask kind of notes coming out with the vanillas and the, mm -hmm. the toffees and things like that, which is really weird to me. So I'm trying to decide, like I, I per, so far pre-water, uh, I prefer the 19, but which one's older? And that's where I'm kind of thinking, well, the 20 is probably older because it's losing the, mm -hmm. the fruit aspect a little bit more. And it's, 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 it's also it has more of a refinement like quality to it, but it's almost like it, I don't want to say it's too old, but it's almost like lost the, the intensity of what it had a couple of years prior to it. That, that's just, yeah, I'm yeah. just guessing so far, but so far I might, I might change my mind after water, but it's definitely more of a spicy vanilla slash. Um, let me take another sip. I'm starting with number 20 first sir, on the water. Just to, Switch it up if you want to join me on that. Okay, let me do that first. It's it, yeah, it's got like almost like a cola esque type of on the twenty, like a really good effervescent. Yeah, which that then that that speaks youth too. So I'm like I'm kind of torn which which one's really which one's the younger of the bunch. This vanilla, uh, it's like French for me. It's like French vanilla. There's a little hazelnut. There's a lot of dark fruit. Ooh, yeah, hazelnut. That's another thing yeah. that he's got. Big time on the hazelnut here, and like. It's just generally just a pleasure. It's just a fucking pleasure to know. It, Maybe it does, it does have a little bit of oak spice and oak char to it, which I'm noticing. Um, Maybe this is the older one since it's got more complexity. It sounds like the 20 might have more notes to it, but I'm, I'm going to go back in and see. Ooh, yeah, more spice even out on the nose after the water. Yeah, it's very sprightly. It's got it's got some dark tones in there too. I can almost get the walnut out of it on the nose. <laughs> it's got like some walnuts and get more of that black pepper on the nose. 
classic Alex picking up the picking up the pepper. Here comes <laughs> yeah. that fruit too. Now the fruit's coming. Yeah. But that hazelnut's still there. Huh. Okay. Wow. That's so spicy. In a good way. You're drinking the 20? Yeah, it's got... Yeah, I'm going to do the same. I'm getting white and black pepper. Oh, so good. It is good. The fruits are still there, but I also get that oakiness is still... Like, I can almost taste the wood. It's it's good. It's just... It's so different. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of oakiness and spice in there, but man, it's it's also just creamy, and it's it's like it's like you had this uh, like a fruit compote with whipped cream on it, or like some type oh, of like, yeah. like, a, like a custard. It's just really quite freaking nice, man. And I'm just putting like a drop with a dropper on this. I'm not uh, doing yep. any spoons or anything crazy. I just that's want what to I did. It. Yeah, that's what I did. Let's give it a little bit of a molecule jolt. And see if we can get something else. Now I'm going to go to the 19. I just put a drop. It might take another one, but I'll I'll start with just one to see if I can get any difference out of it. Mm. That, yeah, I'm that, going in for the 19 right now too. That 20, I'm I just got citrus on the finish. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> I just got like an orange combo combo with like a an orange with a, a candy ginger almost combination. It's wild. Candy ginger. There you go. Yeah, you're you're feeling it, man. You're you're hitting oh. the notes like you're hitting the notes tonight, brother. I love these, man. These this is what whiskey tasting is all about to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, wow. It's interesting, man. When you go, I'm on the nose of the of the number nineteen, and uh, again, it's much sweeter. There's more like juicy fruit coming in there. Not as much of the oak spice. But it, it's well, it's in the background. But I'm still getting that vanilla custard thing that, like, that's like a like a, a a Danish, a vanilla like Danish with some cinnamon sprinkle on it. Very confectionery, very like just thick, bready, delicious. Oh man, the, the 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 intensity of the 19 is what's what's surprising to me in comparison with the the. the I mean, the fruit still there after the water, but now. I'm also getting some really like really nice dark note spices and, and fruits in there. Oh my god. It's so good. <laughs> it's just so good. That palette, again, oily, sticky, viscous. There's some sp there's more spice now, dark chocolate, like bacon. Wow. Mm. You see, the funny thing is, I adore the 19, like the 19, the nose, the palate, the finish, it's like right, like as far as the notes that I'm looking for in an Oloroso Sherry, it's like right there. But the 20 has got more things going on, even though it's not exactly what I was looking for in the Oloroso, you know, sit down Sherry deal. It's almost like the 20 is like not just Oloroso, but has a really great bourbon cast there with it. It's it's weird. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, especially after drinking those sherry bombs that we just had, like this seems deceptively a little bit lighter. And again, the carrot, like the vanilla and the caramel type thing, that, or the toffee rather, not caramel, that you get out is like it's a little like surprising given these are first of Oloroso as well, but um it's chew it it's almost like and it's like got a root beer kind of a flavor to the i mean i get like a like almost like a treacle thing going on in this uh, 20 like a molasses almost you know what i mean yeah it's it smells even thicker it's weird it's like this one's more sherry-esque but this one's got more complexity in like thickness to it mm. that is so bizarre man well, tell us, if you were going to, uh, if you were going to give either of these scores, are you ready to do it yet, or do you want to poke around a little bit more? Before we'll do, we'll do scores, then we'll do uh, your guess on to which one is which. Yeah, we'll do scores, like which one you. We'll do scores, which one you liked better, and then uh, I'll tell you what my scores are in the same, and then I'll let you guess which one was which. 
And then I would like to do a comparison with these other two that I've yeah, got. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it. Just to see, man. All right. Well, as far as scores go, man, these are both superb drams. I mean, if you want to do a sherry tasting, this is how to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. I have to commend Eric on his his selection of, of whiskeys for, for tonight because these are both so freaking good. Um, the 19, I'm going to have to be a little bit nicer on the score. I just enjoy it more. It, it is still complex. It, uh, it, it's tough to, to grade a whiskey based off when you're you're trying to be, you know, you have to be subjective to a point because it's what you like or don't like. But you yeah. also have to look at it as what's the, is it a quality product compared to others, you know, and how does it compare to others at the same age group and, and, and cast type and stuff like that. And I'm kind of like, well... Mm -hmm. They're definitely both at least fours, in my opinion. And I, I think they're both r really, I mean, right at the 4.5 to 4.75 level. I'm just trying to think of how I want to do this. I think the 20 is is just as good. It's just it's just a different type of good. The 20, I think, has the complexity to boost it up a bit. So I'm going to say 4.5 for the 20 and 4.75 for the 19. Damn. Now Blow the bell, man. Telex is Telex is throwing it down. They are both excellent. And yeah. I'm, I just prefer the 19 just a little bit more sure. because it's in, I don't know if the age, I haven't thought about the age thing yet, but the 19 seems to not just be old, but also retain its power on its delivery and that's that's kind of hard to get when you're talking about aged whiskeys like this your chat still off yeah okay good i just i shared one more time for folks in the chat if you didn't know uh which ones we were talking about here so you know if i'm going by like you know which one's older oh, man if i'm going by my own experience and what qualities would an older whiskey give me i'm gonna say that the 20 is probably older but it it also, I mean, to get that type of dried fruit, the notes, like you said earlier, you would think you would go with the one that has that comparatively to the other. So then you would think the 19 would be the oldest one. So I'm kind of I'm kind of fighting with myself. <laughs> I mean, think out of something like a 10 year difference, it's only a two year difference. But take it easy, Dustin. Take it easy. Uh... Uh, who else? Dan, uh, 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 Andrew Page. Take it easy. I'm thinking I'm going to say the 20 is probably a little bit older, but man, I'm probably going to kick myself in the face, and, and I'm probably wrong. But I'm going to I'm going by just my my instinct, even though I'm probably uh, I probably should have went with my my uh, proofreading, but I'm thinking I'm going to stay with the 20 being the older one. So, you're, so tell us whose final guess is that number 19 is the 22-year-old and number 20 is the 24? <sighs> yeah. All right. I, I'm probably wrong, but now that I'm proofreading, roll? it's like, a, yeah, let's do the drum roll. You, sir, are correct. Oh, thank you. Number God. 19 is the 20, 20, 22-year-old 2017 release of Glendronic Allardyce. The tw number 20 was the 24-year-old. I have to say, man, that 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 is uh, that is amazing how different they are. And to well me, done, it goes to show that the 22 is like the perfect year for that particular so, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm going to I'm going to go into this as well. And I'll tell you this much, man. I've tasted these two side by side more than once. And I I have three bottles of the 2019 and just one of the 2017. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I bought the 2019s because I'm like, it's the oldest Allardyce. Like, I got to have a bunch of these, right? And, you know, I keep drinking them side to side, and I just keep coming to the same conclusion you did, man. They are both stellar. And, again, I understand Allardyce is not cheap, y'all. And if you're out at the shop, you're going to see this for $180. bucks. you are going to be like, what the hell? 
<laughs> if you can take a look at the bottle, look at the date. If it's 2020 or beyond, put it back. If it's 2015 through 2019, you might want to buy it. These are probably worth $180 a piece, in my opinion, at oh, the God, yeah. level that you're getting of this age. Now, my, I, I just, I'm with you, man. I, I kept doing it. I kept comparing them, and I'm like, no, nah, this is, can't be so. But I, I, I lean towards the number 19 as well, slightly. It just has a little, it, it's just a little bit more vibrant. It's got a little bit more. Not as complex, but it's it's just a, I just enjoy it more. I, I don't know what to say. Like I just enjoy it more, and I've done this many times. My scores, yeah. I mean, I I'm a I'm a four four point two five on both of these. But if you if you ask me which way to go, I'm going with the you know I'm gonna go with the the twenty two year old. So isn't it weird how like the it is weird. it's not expected. You know, it's not expected. But again, like. No slouch, man. I mean, neither of these are any. These are fantastic releases. It would be fun to do a comparison of one of these with like a, one of the newer versions if one of us wants to spend the money on it at some point in time. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed this, man. This was fun. And I will say that going back to both the Edgardower and the McAllen, I do prefer the uh, the Glenjornics, both of them more so than the McAllen 18. Yeah. And primarily, it's the ABV. I think is what's really killing the eighteen uh, from McAllen. Uh, yeah. Still, I mean, it's still a good whiskey, but I bet ABV. you the nose is better on the McAllen, though. <laughs> that McAllen nose, man, you can't mess with the McAllen nose. <laughs> I'm gonna gas my 2017 right now because I'm gonna have to save some of this bad boy. <laughs> I, t I tell you what, uh, honestly, for me, the the nineteen is better nose wise to me than the McAllen, but. McAllen is better nose wise than the twenty. So to me, and like rating wise, it goes the best is the nineteen, the 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 twenty two year old, and then it's the McAllen eighteen, and then it's the the Allardyce, the twenty four year old third for nose. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. That for is sure, weird. Man, but, um, but I will say, I just put some water on this Edgardour. I'm going to have a sip now, and and let me. Let me tell you what I think real fast. One second. Do it. Just got to make sure I'm seeing the date on the right one. Yeah. Okay. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how good this is with the water. Without the water, it's good. It's just I think it does help with this Edward Hour. And we'll get more into the weeds later on when we actually sit down and take a look at it together. But I'm very happy about the bottle purchase. We'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Um, I only have two. I have a Balachin straight from the barrel, which we should do sometime. But yeah. uh, I do have – this is the one that I'll be, I think, sharing the, uh, the sample with you for the Edward Hour show. So – for those of you folks who don't know, Edredor is actually not like its own distillery. It's act, well, it's called Edredor, but it's owned by a Signatory. So it's literally like just like uh, what Ben Romick is owned by Gordon McPhail, right? Like right. it's an independent bottler that owns its own distillery. So all like Edredors are always they're all Signatory. So the one that I have here, this is the forty six percent, two thousand eight non chill natural. Uh, it's like a ten year old. Nice. Man, yeah, this this is I freaking love it, but I can't imagine it's anywhere near what you have there. So that's what this one looks like. This is a uh, Oh wow. Again, folks, but like for people who are looking, like these sadly are just like you'll never find these in the US. The only thing we get is that Edredo or 10. Like you kind of got to go secondary market or overseas to find them. But if you do, they're worth it. They're kind of funky, interesting um funky and interesting heavy sherry drams. They also do uh, bourbon casks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I see the 10 and the 12 Caledonia a lot over uh, here, but that's the only two I actually see. This one I did have to get from uh, Britain, and it's a 70 milliliter bottle, but I'm definitely not uh, not unhappy by it by any means. And it's a yeah. it's that red uh, tube back there. I mean, that's a beautiful tube. It's a... Uh, I'm 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 so excited to finally get to uh, do a show with you on the Edge of Dower because I mean, it's one of those distilleries that's so underrated and so under well I shouldn't say underrated I think it's un overlooked a lot of the times where people don't even know what it is and know what to yeah. look for. Oh, Fisk said that Edge of Dower has been around way longer than Signatory. It's definitely a real story. Yeah, let me let me rephrase that. 
Edredur nowadays is a distillery that is owned by Gordon Mc, uh, I'm sorry, owned by Signatory. So like it's kind of an interesting situation. Now, yeah, they I'll be make that a little clearer. And Balachin, you're right, Cohen's right. Balachin is the peated line of Edredur and still owned by uh what do you call it? Uh Signatory. Well, yeah, different than a- is owned by Gordon McPhail. Yeah, this is just to show you. This was my first, uh, my first Edredour bottle for myself. As the, it's the Balakin, uh the f- number four Oloroso, uh, oh, yeah. unchill filtered. Really, uh, really good. I mean, the only bad thing about it, it didn't have an age statement on it. But uh, I was down in, uh, and this was a seventy milliliter. Uh, I'm sorry, 70 centiliter bottle, which was uh, funny because I got this in D.C. down at a uh, an Indian place. I forgot the name of it, but the guy, uh, he's like, what you looking for? I'm like, ah, I'm just looking for something that's, you know, got sherry, but I also love peat. Do you have any peated sherry? And this is what he threw at me. It's a number four. And I tell you what, it's a maturation, and it's really good. Yeah. If you ever see this uh, line about natural color, 46%. That's a uh, that's how you present a whiskey, I think. <laughs> oh man, that was so 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 good, man. That, I think uh, I, I'm not sure if this will be in the same ballpark per se, but it might. I, I'm I'm eager to see what you think about it. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. That's going to be fun, and. Uh, just to give folks a preview of kind of like, you know, we're talking about this next show when we're going to do Edredor. Our Edredor show isn't until April. <laughs> so we got oh, a little bit of time. But I better, I better take it slow. <laughs> we do have some, we got some really good ones coming up though, man. Um, next week, we are doing Glen Cadam. Glen Cadam 13, The Reawakening, and Glen Cadam 21. Oh, yes. Uh, so the week after that, February 16th, we're going to be doing. Glen Goyne Teapot Dram Batch 7 and Glen Goyne 21. So we're going to be doing some heavy hitting Glen Goines. And then uh, to close out February, it's Glen Livet. We're doing a Glen Livet Nadura Oloroso and then Glen Livet 21. So, I mean, we got a bunch of good ones coming up, man. This is going to be fun. Before we get yeah. back into some really heavy peated stuff <laughs> in the beginning of March, Lagavulin 16 and 18, Long Row. Pino Long Row 13 Cab. That's going to be fun. Yeah, the uh, and that 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 Glen Going 21. If I like it as much as uh, I think I will, maybe I'll even save up for a 25 some point to join the uh, 25 club with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing that's so amazing about the Glen Going 25 is that it's 48. percent That is amazing, and I've heard that the the viscosity of it, and that's my only kind of. If if you ever ask me what. Telex, what do you not like about Glengoin? One of the very few things that I don't like about them is they usually are a thin mouth coat, yeah. but I've heard of that 25 has got a nice thick kind of a mouth coat to it. So I'm kind of the Glengoin 21 is the only one I've not had of their of their like available core range. It's oh, really interesting. Me. Well, I haven't had the cast strength either, but so Glengoin is one of those distilleries that that really messes with me. The 10, I thought, was really underwhelming. The 12, I thought, was better than it should be. The 15, I thought, was great. The 18, I thought, was meh. The, the 21, I haven't had. The 25 is stellar. So it's like it's it's weird. Like that 15 and 12, I think, are really solid. Now, the 15 is not always easy to find, but the Glen Goyne, yeah. the difference between the Glen Goyne 10 and the Glen Goyne 12, I'm telling you, it's probably a full point score, if not maybe more. And you're only paying for you know maybe ten dollars for more for the twelve. It it's really good. It goes to show sometimes when you find these fifty dollar whiskeys and and it's like a ten. If you see the twelve for just sixty bucks or seventy, you know a little yeah. bit. More, sometimes it is better to shell out a couple extra dollars for a much better experience. That's my been my. Uh, I agree. I'm trying to think things. about what uh, what malt I'm going to pour to close this out tonight. Um, do you I have a stick with something with sherry? But boy, I, I don't know. What is it going to be? <laughs> Do you by chance have any? <laughs> oh, I'm knocking stuff over. Oh, don't mind me. He's cut off. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are too long. Yeah. Oh. His legs are too long. Yeah, He's still just... pulling his legs with sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Joe. 
Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm maybe going to go, any, go ahead. Do you have any, do you have any Glengarry? I don't, but I love the Glengarry 12. That was the Glengarry 12 was in my top five whiskeys of the year in uh, wow. 2019. I love the Glengarry 12. I do like it a lot. And I, have you ever heard of the 15 Renaissance by chance? No, I haven't had it, but God, I'd love to. I'd love to it's, get my hands on it. Your buddy Peter uh, up north, he seems to have like a knack for finding it. I've I've looked and looked and looked and looked, and I have never ever found one. That's my bottle to uh, <laughs> on, I think one of my on my wish list for. Let me let me pull up my uh, my Glengarry wish list here and see what the year on the uh, the bottle was. It looks like they have they have a seventeen year Renaissance that just got released. Um, I saw it at kosher wine, I think. I have to check another look, but um, that might be a definite buy on that one because uh, they used to have a 15 Renaissance, Eric, and now they have a 17 year. That's like the oldest, I think, Lingari that you can get. I, I was looking enough in a, in a whiskey tasting a while back. I can't remember if it was one of Stephen's friends or if it was someone else. I think it was one of Stephen's friends. But they had a Glengarry 21, and it was like an old bottle version of it. Oh, wow. It was, it was during like one of these blind tastings. And when I went for the nose, man, it was the most different whiskey I've ever nosed. It had elements of yes there was some sherry there but there was also some crazy great bourbon like notes that were going on it was one of the better whiskeys i've ever nosed but you can't find a damn 21 year old anymore it's sad yeah <laughs> so if, I, if yeah. anyone ever sees a glengarry 21 year old please let telex know if it's, especially if it's the distillery bottle that's what i'm looking for <laughs> yeah definitely um the 12 I thought was just like, I'd love to try more of them and you can get a lot of them uh, overseas online. They have tons of weird Glengarry releases. The 12 I thought was just such a dessert whiskey. I mean, it's 48%. I remember it was like really thick. That was, that was a great pour. Uh, I was a big fan of it. We'll have to get some more if we can find it. It's not, that's one of those whiskeys yeah. you rarely ever, ever, I mean, even Petite Cellars doesn't carry any Glengarry's that I, that I, yeah. So since we've done with the Pete or done with the Sherry, uh, I'm gonna go for a Pete. I'm gonna do the Octomore 10 year old fourth release. Just 208 ppm. It's gonna totally blast that Sherry in the face. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, the only thing Gary they have at Petite is the 12 year old for 60 bucks, which is not not bad. I mean, it's 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 pricey for a 12, but it's definitely well worth it for 60, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I don't, I'm surprised they don't have any other Glengarry's there besides that one. Isn't that crazy? Well, they're, like the the ones that I see the most of is the Glengarry 12 and the Glengarry Founders Reserve, which I think is, I think not worth your money. Yeah, that's like the um, entry level NAS type thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one I think is on the underwhelming side, um, but the the 12 is freaking stellar, man. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, whiskey ace. And I have been, and I am still working on my um and I am gonna be pouring some more of my Solera bottle. I've been and at at some point we don't have to do it anytime soon because I only have maybe three about a fourth of the bottle in there. But uh, we'll have to do a our exchange some Solera bottles, yeah. infinity bottles if you want to. Oh yeah. And I'll even give you the list of what I I put all in it. If you hopefully you have a list of what you put in yours and then we can just exchange it and I and do, do have a list. I have a monstrous Pete. Pete's uh, Infinity Bottle that is Ooh, that'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah, terrifying. I, I, I haven't added any of these octos yet. I gotta get some. I got a couple octomores. So I'm gonna put some of those in there. But yeah, guess what? <laughs> it's guess brutal. what? I know the perfect guy to taste your Infinity Pete Bottle. <laughs> guess who it is? <laughs> is his name? Does he live in Maryland? And is his name Alex the Whiskey Tech? <laughs> yes, it is. Fantastic. <laughs> I know that guy. He knows what that. No, but I think you'll, I, I tried to pick everything that I've gotten here is just sherry. There's no peat. There's no anything else. Just really good standard. I even threw some of the Ben Rennes in there, the Blair Athel, the Dalloween, um, the Deanston. I'm going to put some of this Edgerdower in there, some of the McAllen 18 in there. It's yeah, going to be yeah, the yeah. best Solera bottle I think you've ever had if I, if I play my cards yeah. right. I'm, I'm, I'm going for that. <laughs> You know, speaking of Sherry, though, like I was, I was just thinking about this. 
you know, we talked about some good sherry whiskeys tonight, shared a couple of recommendations, shared a couple of budget recommendations. Which which sherry whiskeys out there would you would you tell people to to avoid? Are there any out there like whether they're cheap or more on the more expensive side that just didn't quite do it for you that like like might not be stuff that we would recommend folks to to go shopping for? That's a good question. I, Let me, uh, I definitely have a couple. So. Go ahead, go ahead and give your your couple, and I'm going to look yeah, at my list. Um, you know, two that I I honestly would avoid. Oh. If you're just getting into sherry, go ahead. I think I know what one of them's going to be. You do. <laughs> it's going to be by a distillery that starts with A. Yes, <laughs> so, and I will, and I'm agreeing with Eric wholeheartedly on this on this uh, statement. And and usually they're known for sherry bombs, but yeah, there's only yeah. one that is good, and Eric hasn't tried it yet. So this is going to be. I have tried it yet. I tried it on my oh. happy last week, and I'm a believer now. Okay, good. Two okay, ago. I did it two weeks ago. So, uh, one distillery that I would, I personally would avoid, and I'll tell you why, is uh, Age Statement Aberlours. So my experience with entry level sherry's, we're talking twelve year olds, and even going higher with a sixteen year old, which is upwards of a hundred dollars. They are all bottled at 40%. They are very light. They are stripped of most of their body. They have a ton of bad colorant in it. The the Aberlour 16 was one of my first most disappointing whiskeys I've ever had. The 12, I think the 12 is nothing to write home about. Um, if you're going to buy Aberlour, you just go for the Abuna and that's it. That's the cast strength. And I avoided the Abuna for years because of my negative experiences with Aberlour. Uh, I did find a batch 60, which is a good one. And my, I'm turned around on that part. I'm did also you, courtesy of John dude, checking out the Abu Alba. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I'm telling you, if, if you're looking to buy a 12 year old Sherry, you can do a lot better than Abra or some alternatives, Glenn Farkless 12, um, McAllen 12, although it's a little bit more expensive. Um, I would even venture to say something that's not fully sherry, but gives you the sherry. Um, the uh, um, the Glenmorangie La Santa. Um, those are, you know, I think some solid alternatives. Glendronic or Glendronic Twelve Two. The other one I would avoid is unsurprising as well. Dalmore. Uh, yeah. Dalmore is again tons of colorant. It looks good, but it's not not amazing um it's overpriced it's chill filtered to death it's only 40 percent. i'd avoid that and you know alternatives are the same thing um when i when i think about expensive sherries things that are you know over that hundred dollar range the one i i'm like a little bit unsure about this and it's not a fully shared whiskey, but it's definitely got a lot of sherry in it. And that is the Springbank 18. I feel like the Springbank 18 underwhelms for what you are expecting from it. And, um, you know, like it, it really, I think the 15 is better. I really do. I just, yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't, it didn't quite do it for me. I mean, it's mostly X sherry you're looking at spending upwards of $200 on it. I would avoid that one and go for a younger Springbank or an older. I would also avoid the Glen Goyne 18. Um, it's solid, but really uninspiring compared to some other things in that $150, $100, $150 range. Again, Abrila or Abu Na, um, Glen Farkless 15, if you can pick that up overseas, do it. Um, you know, Edge of Doors, as we were talking about. The only other one I would mention that I think is, you know, a real stunner at that age, again, is Glendronic Allardyce, right? Third one I would avoid, and it's tempting because it's got a heavy age statement on it, and it makes you think to your, and it's got a great price, and that is the Glen Farkless 25. I think it's, uh, you can find it in the U.S. sometimes sub $150 for a 25-year-old whiskey. I really think that, uh, I think that it's like, yeah, it, it doesn't have much going on. It's not all that complex. It's not all that interesting. And you think you're going to might get something a lot. It's only 43%, but it's 25 year old whiskey. Sounds really exciting. It's not, I honestly think the younger Glenn Farkless's are better. So those are just a couple of my like thoughts and recommendations on the, 
what to avoid. What about when you? you when you had the um, the Abana, do you remember getting any like clove cigarettes off the the finish oh. on that one? Mm -mm. Did but, you bring up a really important point about Abana. The thing about Abrila or Abana is the batch variation is huge. Perhaps yeah. there's not a whiskey that has a more stark batch variation than the Abana. I would do a little research online. If you're at the shop and you see a bottle, it's going to have a batch number prominently on it. Google for a little bit. Read a little bit about people saying on Reddit. I'm telling you, um, yeah. there are major, major differences between batches. Batch 60, yeah. for example, really good. Batch 61, apparently one of the worst. Like these are things that you just kind of got to get a feel for. Um, so that's yeah, what I do your research whiskey. Yeah, when I had the uh, the 58, I think, was the one that I started with. And that had a really nice clove finish, uh, clove cigarette finish on it, which I thought was amazing. And like you said, I think the second one I had was like a 63, somewhere around there. And I was like, it's still good, but I missed my clove finish. I'm like, what happened to it? It's crazy. It's like, it was like a, a almost like a completely different bottle in a, in a weird way with that. But yeah, I, I agree with Eric on the, uh, the Abelauer is one of the ones that I would be really hesitant about the age statements. Uh, I'm, and I have not tried the new, uh, that one of that, that, uh, Abena, uh, Alta or Saga, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I haven't had that one either. Yeah, I, it is on my one to do list because it is an NAS. So Abelar is one of those rare distilleries that you might actually want to go with the NAS before you even go with the <laughs> statement. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's true. It's true. The uh, other ones I'd say um, to definitely be more. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna go through my list real fast. And I'll, I'll give you like a if I see something that stands out in a good way or a bad way. The Bladnock people do great whiskeys uh sherry the 15 adela is phenomenal i have not tried the 17 or 25 yet the 25 is on my possible pickup list so we'll look at that maybe later on but if you haven't had the 15 adela i would definitely recommend that one as a, a definite buy um the bowmores are iffy uh, on some of the the <laughs> okay. bottles don't go there uh, the we we talked about Dalmore. i agree with eric on that one 12 15 i would just completely skip uh the deanstons are good but you have to like sulfur if you're cool with sulfur you're gonna like the deanstons the the sherry options if you're not cool with the sulfur though you might as well just turn around um, same way with Ben Nevis. So the, the younger stuff has the sulfuric properties. Some of the yeah. older stuff doesn't. And and Stephen Connor will definitely be the first to say that they have some of the best sherry out there. So sometimes it's a it's a plus or a minus on the depending on the age. Uh, Glen Gary, we both like the, that one. Um, Glen Mora. Now they have some interesting sherries, but even the fifteen, ah. For the money, I just don't think it really stands up to other ones for the same price. Some people love it, though. It's one of those that, you know, for the money, it's good, but I would be hesitant maybe. Maybe do a tasting first if you can on Glen Murrah. Um, Glen Scotia, I love. They have uh, th some of their stuff that's just straight bourbon tastes like sherry. <laughs> we know that by the 15. Um, I would, uh, I, I like Glen Alecky stuff. They have good sherry products. Yeah. Glenchonic, we've already mentioned. Um, yeah. The ones, Glen Farkless, I, I agree with Eric on. Those are the ones that are kind of match sticky sulfuric to a point, and some versus others. You got to be all in before you, you know shell out well, a lot of I've money. I've not had. I've I've not had. I've had the Glen Farkless twelve. I've had the Glen Farkless fifteen, and I've had the twenty five. I've not had the twenty one. I've not had the seventeen. I've not had the ten. I don't know what to expect from those. <laughs> The My general good. feeling was that the 25, while great price, was underwhelming for what you expect from a 25-year-old whiskey. The 15, which is I wish was here in the U.S., is bottled at 46%. In fact, I have a bottle of it. Uh, you have to get it overseas, but it's probably the best Glen Farkos I've had so far, and the 12 is just fine. I like the 17. I mean, the prices on Glen Farkless are great. That's what makes yeah. them kind of intriguing. But if you don't like sulfur, you might want to kind of take a step back because they do have a lot of that in their stuff. Um, Nakondo uh, is a good sulfured whiskey, but it's, I mean, a uh, sherried whiskey. I'm not, not sulfur, but sherried. But it's really hard to find in the U.S. So uh, Nakondo is also run by Diageo. So mm -hmm. 
it's a really tough one to find. So it's, it is one to look out for. I had the 15. And I, and I liked it a lot. The oldest bottle you can get is an 18. And I'm going to be looking for, for that one uh, down the road here. Um, McKellen, I like overpriced usually, but sometimes not. Mortlock guys are ones that are sherry that I would probably skip unless you're like a really savory dream. Or the but independent bottlings of Mortlock. The, yeah. the really Richie, I thought, was kind of meh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, I'll agree, and I'll agree with you on Springbank. I don't think the Springbank sherry ones are all that great. The 18 and the 15. I, they're just not. I'm bullish on the 15. I like the 15 quite a bit. Well, again, very bad tradition. I have some 2016 bottlings of that, which have just a ton of funk of that spring bake fusty funkness, which I really, really enjoy. I don't think it's for everybody. I personally really enjoy that expression of it. But I understand that the 15 is famous. The 18, I think, has been – it's not that it's bad. Neither of them are bad. I just think the 18 is a little underwhelming. Like, you just – you know, you have a spring bank 12 cast strength, which is just such a phenomenal dram. It's so complex. I mean, it's a different type. It's it's a different type of whiskey entirely. And then you True. get an eighteen. It just kind of misses the mark a little bit. No, I hear you. I mean, if I was gonna buy a spring like a two hundred dollar price point, it is these days. Exactly. I would get a ten. I would get a twelve cast strength. I would skip the fifteen myself. I, I know how you feel about that one. I would skip the eighteen. But once you go do that, then you got to look for all the like the greens are good. Some of the thirteens, fourteens, a twelves they have in there. The burgundies are good. They have twelve years for those. Um, and the port cast matured nineteen is a great bottle, but it, it's hard to find. But yeah, I'd a lot say of those, a lot of them are you know those like one offs that they do are tough to find. There's no doubt. The great thing about Springbank is usually, though, especially because they are pricier. If you do get a bottle, it's 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 rare that you get a bad one. I mean, the I think the the eighteen is the only one I hear complaints on on a regular basis. We'll say, you know, and most people can't afford a twenty one. So no, God, the twenty and they're just. The twenty one is like six hundred some dollars. Yeah, it's on my wish wish like bottom like last probably twenty one year old to pick up list, but someday I will have a twenty. Well, and the year that you get it matters because some of them have more sherry than bourbon, some are more bourbon than sherry. It's it's kind of all over the place. One one distillery that we didn't really mention much tonight that I do like their sherry a lot is Tamdu, the batch we mentioned. But the fifteen is a solid whiskey, I'd say. Yeah, we did that. We did a tasting that one day, right? We did the ten and the fifteen. I think we both were pretty impressed with those. Those are good. Yeah. And 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 also, and and my last one I'll talk about uh, that I did not mention, but is one of the best Oloroso bottles I ever had was the uh, Kill Karen from Glengyle. The fifteen Oloroso uh, single cask was awesome. So it, and it is very well worth it. How, where did you get that? <laughs> it's been a while back. Let me uh, let me pull wow. it out. You've got a 15 year old Oloroso sitting on the shelf there, huh? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, sorry about that. This is uh, uh, about a year ago. Kilcarran had a really awesome release of the. Uh, they had, and they had five different ones. They had an Oloroso, they had a Port, they had a, um, a PX, I think. They had a saw turns, I believe, and one other one. I'm, I think I'm missing what the other one was off the top of my head. But they um, they did 15 years. They had 51.5% ABV, and um, it was dark as hell, man. And it was it was a little pricey, but it was under 200, I think. Yeah. Um, wow. And these were uh, this was distilled in May of 2004, bottled in October of 2019. So you have a 15-year statement at 51.5. There was 280 bottles of this. So it is hard to find. They are imported by Pacific Edge Imports in California. Uh, so Californians probably have a very much easier time of finding this stuff than we do. But uh, if you have any way to pick up any Kilcurin 15 single cask, I don't care what the type is. I would jump all over it, man. <laughs> Yeah, and the new 16 is out. I have a couple of bottles. I'll be next week on my happy hour. I'll be uh, cracking one of those bad boys open and uh, definitely have a sample coming your way.
I was gonna say you're saving a bottle for Telex, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll save a bottle for Telex. I got three, oh, I got three goodies. Let me grab them real quick. I got three goodies coming your way. I will we'll show them off for you. For you. Oh man, he's got he found the, and I knew they were coming, but I didn't know they were released yet. But I, I mentioned to Eric that Kill Karen had a 16 year release coming out, yeah. and and I just kind of didn't passing. And sure enough, like a week later, he turns around and says, "Oh, I got three of these." <laughs> I'm like, "What the hell?" Oh, and the, the carriage is 2015. Oh, uh, can't wait. Freaking Quagmire. And this oh, is, uh, yeah, this one is going to be amazing. This is 55.8%. See, that's then, how you do it, Quagmire. <laughs> yeah, right. Unlike the Distillers Edition, which is 40%, and I sadly have a bottle of. I did, then, I did, too. I did too. That was my saver, but I, I was like, Craig yeah. Alecky, this is the uh, exception. Exceptional Casters 23. This one is 7.5, man. And it is uh, all sherry. Oh, I can't wait to do these shows. <laughs> Look at what this looks like. Look at <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, see, now that's a bottle of whiskey that's right there. That's a beautiful one. Man. It looks great, too. They have like Springbank like looking bottles. Yeah, this is going to be good. I'm excited to get these in your hands, man. Um, you know how you mentioned Balvenie is like your favorite? Well, those are guys who are probably my favorite when it comes to like this, the standard presentation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They I like you guys really have a really nice little craft thing going. But I, I do also really like, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I do agree with you. The Balvenie, I like theirs a lot, too, because they almost have like a schematic draftsman kind of feel to their presentation of their bottles. Yeah. I also really like Aaron's new I see an Octomore there. Was that an Octomore? Yeah, this is the Octomore 10 year old. Uh, this is the, yeah, this is the newest one. It's 208 ppm. I got a couple Octos. I got a 10.3 and a 6.1 too. We'll, we'll have to do an Octo sometime. This one is interesting, man. Um, it's not as like smoky and peaty. Uh, it's not as smoky as you'd expect, but it is super complex. Yeah, this is the 10 year old. It's, I'm not complaining, man. It's, it's pretty damn tasty. Brick Lottie, Brick Lottie, man, just they just they just kill it, bro. They just kill it. I've always tried, I'm not a huge like I don't I'm not a like freak about Brook Lottie's where I chase every bottle, but if I could, I would, man. Like if there's one distillery that I think I would choose if I had to live on a desert island and I could only have whiskey from one distillery, although they don't, they're not my favorite. I think I'd have to take Brook Lottie. Because yeah. like they're the most diverse. You got the Port Charlottes, you got the regular Brook Lotties, and then you got the freaking Octos. Like, how do you? How does any other distillery compete with that range? The only and, people that do it is Springbank, really. If you think about it, yeah. the, the even then, right. it's like I don't know, man. The diversity, the quality, and the and the just like variety of releases that they do. My only. My only bitch point with Brook Lottie is the availability. That's the, yeah, that's yeah, the only yeah, thing. Yeah. I like. But like, like you, like you, I'm a huge fan of the Octomore series. I do mm. love the differences between like the higher PPMs because I do notice the the 269 versus the 139 and things like that. What they're doing with five year old distillate in some of those Octomores is freaking crazy, man. Yeah, I've been lucky enough. The only ones I've had of that series is the 6.1, the 7.1, the 7.2, and the 7.3. Oh, okay. The point twos are interesting because they always have all the like funky finishes. The point threes are the Isla Barleys. I the 10.3 I, I really, really like. Um that's the funny thing. Like the 7.3 I didn't like because of the durian fruit thing that was going on with it, but the 7.2 is my favorite Octomore I've ever had. It was the French Syrah cask. It was so damn good, dude. My friend, yeah. you know, generous, you know, remember generously Paul from Distiller? Yeah. He's, he's the one that had we were doing that 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 voyage around the uh the Scotland and and luckily he, he picked the Brooklady 7.2 Octomore and I was like, that's the best damn one of the best damn whiskeys I've ever had. It was it was so good. Yeah, for sure. So I, think, I, I can't wait to get that 10, man. That's gonna I, I'd love to taste that and and the uh, anything else that you've got floating around and yeah, for sure. We'll if, do it. We'll definitely you, uh if you ever see an OBA, definitely let me know because the OBAs are really, 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 really good on that series. I know Stephen Connor was telling me that that's the ones to pick up if you if you ever see them out and about. They're not cheap, but you know we're talking two fifty. Nothing about them was cheap, <laughs> sadly. Yeah. 
250 to 280, but like yeah. an OBA, man, those are, and I have, the sad thing is I'm kicking myself because I've seen it at Petite before and I should have picked it up, but I didn't pull the trigger, but there's yeah. so many good whiskey out there. It's hard to get them all. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. All right, man. Um, I got to sign off, but uh, same here, man. Show, brother. Um, yeah. I hope everybody can come next week. We're going to be, we're going to be getting into a serious craft distillery, old school style, Glen Cadham. We're going to be doing oh, yes. 13 year old reawakening, pretty widely available release from Glen Cadham. And then in the second hour, as usually, we'll do something a little special. We're doing the Glen Cadham 21. So, uh, hey, take a second before you sign off. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subbed to my comrade, Telex the Whiskey Check, give him a sub. You can sub to Malt Muse or Whiskey Reviews as well. Uh, we deeply appreciate y'all, man. We hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah, and you can still pick up the 21. It's not, it's not too late to pick up that 21 Glencadam if you have a chance. And definitely the 13 is everywhere. There's no excuse not to have at least a Glencadam on your bar. And I don't think you'll be, uh, you know, disappointed because the – oh, yeah, go ahead and li link the uh, Discord there, Jason. That's fine because a lot of us like to, to talk on the side. And uh, it's always good to find people to do a little trading with and uh, news and – it recon and all that stuff. So feel free to share the, uh, the link, but the, uh, I, th I think it's going to be a great show. A lot of people have told me that they're happy about, uh, the Glenn Cadam for sure. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. And I have, uh, I've dialed, dove a bit into the Glenn Cadam 13 and I freaking love it, man. It's way better than I expected it to be. So excited about that. Telix. Um, for some reason, that. hold on. His link didn't pop up. Let me make sure that I might have to do one of those, uh, Give me one second to see if I have to, to go in there and approve something. That's the only thing I hate about when uh, you're dealing with a, uh, you know, the deal when you're doing StreamYard versus the actual uh, thing is, is seeing all the comments. Let me see you if I can. The deal when you're doing StreamYard versus the actual. <laughs> wow. I, don't, I didn't see your link there, uh, Jason. Can you post it? I didn't even see a approval thing to click on. I don't think it ever came. I think you need to clear the post. I got to sign off there, brother. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's figure out and, uh, peace out. Thanks, everybody. Everybody stay safe. Be well. Wear a mask. Uh, I'll catch you all. Well, I'm dropping a review Friday. It's of a good whiskey. It's a smoky whiskey. It might be an art bag whiskey. Who knows? Check it out. Whiskey review drops on Friday. See you guys later. Peace. I didn't get the um, the link there, Jason. I'm trying to post it. If you could post it for me, he didn't share it. It's it's not even coming in as a possibility to even approve. That's what's weird. Um, maybe if you let's see, let me think. If there's there's got to be a way to do this. Maybe. It must not be working at YT. I guess it's YouTube. That's weird. It, I, I, did anybody see it come in? I haven't seen it. And relink us. Huh. I don't see the uh, anybody. Uh, can you do like a dot, dot, dot and then post the link? I need your link, Ace. Yeah, Whiskey, go ahead and post it. Or, or something. I'm seeing them on both sides here on the uh, on the stream and in the um, on the YouTube. I'm just not seeing them come up here. Oh, let me see if, if there's an easy way to do it, man. Give me one second. Uh, add moderator. Here we go. There you go. See if that works, man. I don't mind you doing the moderation too. Actually, I need somebody to help me out on the side. So uh, let's see if that works. Hopefully. Oh, okay. I, I I did get one from uh, Whiskey Ace, so I hit show on that. It should come in. I'm not sure how you're posting it, Jason, but it's not even showing up. I, I Whiskey Aces, I did see that one, but for some reason, I I, I do see Whiskey Ace with the six X K B R Q R G. Oh, there we go. I, now I see it. There we go, guys. So if you want to join um, 
a little Discord. Uh, sorry about the blurriness. I don't know how I got out of focus. It doesn't matter. I'm signing off anyway. <laughs> if you uh, go to go to this link, it, you might have to type it in manually if you can't click on it. It is case sensitive, so make sure it's capital A, capital U, etc. Uh, but uh, try that and see if uh, yeah, put a HTTPS in front of that. That uh, HTTPS whack whack discord .gg slash the rest of that you should be able to get to us from there i'm pretty sure i'm already a part of that and if i'm not i'll go ahead and join it now i had to add add your uh thing there uh, whiskey because you uh oh well anyway <laughs> i think we got it under control now i'm gonna i'm gonna definitely gonna use this for myself if uh if I'm not already in there and hope to see you guys there as well. Definitely uh, check us out on the side and um, hope to see you guys at the next show. Tasty Tuesday and sorry about the blurriness. I'm not sure what happened with my uh, focus. There we go. But uh, hopefully uh, see you guys next uh, time. We'll do the Glen Cadams and uh, Slanchava for now. Hopefully you guys had a good Tuesday and uh, see you then.